Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our webinar on varicose vein treatment. My name is Louise and I'll be your host this evening. Our expert presenter is consultant vascular surgeon, Mr. Aaron Sweeney, you can see on screen. And this presentation will be followed by a question and answer session. If you'd like to ask a question during or after the presentation, please do so using the Q&A icon, which is at the bottom of your screen. This can be done with or without giving your name. Please note this session is being recorded if you do provide your name. If you'd like to book your consultation, we will provide contact details at the end of this session and um, a small offer for attending the session. I now hand over to Mr. Sweeney and you'll hear from me again shortly. Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is uh, Aaron Sweeney. Uh, I'm uh, one of the two consultant vascular surgeons who work here at uh, Benenden. Our main uh, focus of treatment is on varicose veins. Uh, we do quite a lot of them. Uh, so today I'm just going to start talking a little bit about what's involved, what we do, uh, the numbers we treat per year, and some of the, a uh, little bit of an explanation of what exactly varicose veins are and what is available to you. So uh, as we start, I'll just say what's going to be included in this session. Uh, so I'll talk a tiny bit about myself, a little bit more about treating uh, treatment at Bennett and the hospital, I'll tell you a little bit about what varicose veins are, kind of what, uh, what symptoms they produce, and then a little bit about how I check things out, and then give you an overview of the different treatments that are available. We have a little video of uh, uh, one of our patients, and then at the end, uh, we want to have a question and answer setting uh, session, I should say. <clears throat> so most people have specific questions they want to ask. Sometimes I answer them on my way through all these slides. Um, sometimes people feel a bit nervous asking questions about veins because they don't quite understand anatomy and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Please don't be embarrassed. It's uh, amazing uh, the number of people who know very little about what's going on with, uh, with their vascular system. It's not unusual. And it's sometimes nice if you ask a question, I can answer it. Um, and it's often a question that many people wanted to ask. First thing, that's me. Uh, I'm a vascular surgeon, so I deal mostly with our used to deal mostly with arteries and veins. Now I deal almost exclusively with veins. Uh, I work here with Mr. Eddie Challoner, and we were the guys when we were a good bit younger who uh, saw this technique. Uh, initially, it started over in New York, and then uh, Eddie was the first guy to do it in um, London. I was the junior doctor then, uh, so I saw the first one ever performed here. And essentially, we both looked at it and thought, well, that's much better than stripping veins. And then it took a few years for us to actually get us up and running and working perfectly. So like many new techniques, you think it's going to be fantastic. And it often takes three or four more years of research to actually get it to a level where you can you work out how to do it properly and safely and also to make sure that it is better than the treatment that was there before. At Bennett Hospital, we do a lot of uh, varicose vein surgery. We are actually the largest uh, provider of veins uh, in England. Um, and just to note, we the CQC, which are the uh, which is the government group that goes around checking things out, think uh, rated us as, as outstanding, and that's based on what the hospital looks like, how it works, how patients and how staff uh, feel. So we do uh, a lot of veins and we get decent results. Most people are pretty happy. Um, like everything, there's always occasional uh, patients who are a little unhappy because of an odd complication here and there. But most people, uh, we try our best to make it a fairly straightforward experience and fix the problem that you have. So what are varicose veins? <clears throat> I'll give you a very brief uh, insight into the anatomy of your vascular system. So your heart is pumping away and it'll pump into your aorta, which is uh, an artery. Your artery then heads on down through your chest, through your tummy, gives loads of branches, and then finally heads on down into both legs. The artery going into your leg is probably the size of your pointing finger. And it normally sends in about a liter of blood per minute. That means that a liter of blood per minute has to come back out again. So the artery has the advantage of having a pump and gravity. 
So everything goes down and your arterial blood delivers oxygen and a little of other stuff just to keep your muscles, etc., working. Your veins are trying to take all that blood and deliver it back up to your heart to be pumped again. I think it's helpful to think of your veins like a Christmas tree. You have one main vein that runs up the center of your leg. That's called your deep vein. And remember that drains a liter, sometimes two liters per minute when you're exercising. And there are hundreds of branches. Most of those branches are draining muscle. Um, and they have the advantage of being surrounded by muscle, so they can squeeze the blood up your leg. The ones that cause varicose veins are draining your skin. So in certain people with usually white skin like mine, you can see loads of blue veins under the surface. They're called saphenous veins. There's hundreds of them. They're nearly all like little shoelaces and about that size, and they all drain about a teaspoon or so of blood per minute. On their own, they're not that important, but altogether they drain your skin uh, adequately. Your skin doesn't require an awful lot of blood. Um, uh, but its main trouble is that these veins aren't surrounded by muscle. They're going uphill, and so they need some valves to keep everything going in the right direction. And a varicose vein happens when that one of those valves fails. So instead of the blood allowing everything to go only uphill, it starts to pour back down again. In the beginning, your other veins work a little bit of overtime, taking care of that, and so you don't get any symptoms. But eventually, uh, in about 75% of people or so, the other veins just can't quite manage. And so you start initially to get a little bit of swelling, usually around your ankle. Subsequent to that, it can get a little bit achy or sore. And then, very occasionally, you get uh, little clots forming in your veins. That's called thrombophlebitis. And sometimes people have veins for ages and they all of a sudden get a little bit of trouble. And that's nearly always because if you start some blood pressure medication that relaxes your blood vessels. But if you relax the varicose vein, it gets bigger and then it suddenly becomes sore. Some things that you might not think of when you're looking at varicose veins, you sometimes see big, huge, chunky veins on certain people and that causes no trouble. And then other times you can see the tiniest little veins and you wonder why that person's having anything, uh, any treatment. But some varicose veins you can't see very well because they're just under the surface and they often produce swelling to begin with, um, cramping at night or that very heavy feeling towards the end of the day. Most people, when they lie in bed at night, the veins drain, so they usually feel they're cured first thing in the morning. And then as the day goes on, your legs swell, sorry, your veins swell, and any symptoms you get usually get worse as the day goes on. Yeah, so varicose veins typically cause more trouble in the evening, and they also cause more uh, trouble in hot weather because they dilate a little bit. And for ladies, they cause more trouble at the end of pregnancy and just before period time because... Uh, you guys get a little surge of progesterone and progesterone dilates veins. Uh, so that's why your ankles sometimes swell and why your last trimester can be a bit miserable. Pregnancy doesn't necessarily cause varicose veins, but if you have them at the beginning of your pregnancy, it makes life a little miserable. So veins, think of them like a Christmas tree, hundreds of branches, most of them working perfectly, but it only takes one. And then that fills up with blood and puts a bit of back pressure onto your skin, either makes it, swell, makes it swell or itchy. So how do you treat veins? Well, first thing is you don't necessarily have to rush and do anything. If you're not having much trouble, you can leave them be. Most veins don't cause any great trouble, uh, but the older treatment used to be to do cuts and disconnect uh, where the branches join the main uh, vein. And then you put a little wire inside and pull it out, and that's called stripping. <clears throat> and that's a pretty uh, brutal operation. <clears throat> it was a pretty brutal operation. I used to do it as a junior doctor. It worked, but in half the people, the veins used to come back. And that it didn't matter, really, if you did a great job. Uh, when your body was trying to heal itself, it produced new veins. And so that's why 50% of people uh, got recurrent veins after stripping. And it's why operations for varicose veins uh, got such a bad name uh, because people thought it was fairly useless. Once you've lasered a few veins, you realize that that kind of recurrence level is uh, is reduced dramatically. Uh, it's probably no more than 1%. And 
The advantage in doing uh, laser treatment is that you can mostly do it under local anaesthetic. Uh, we can treat almost everyone with a laser. And uh, the other important thing just on the slide there is that we do over a thousand of these a year. That tells you that kind of reasonably good at doing them and everyone around us is reasonably good at dealing with them. Uh, so that's the nurses, et cetera, are all used to that procedure. Uh, sometimes you hear about different grades of varicose veins. So I'll quickly go through this. There's, we call these grade ones. Uh, they're just small little things on the surface. They're cosmetic thread veins, best treated with a little bit of sclerotherapy, but they're not dangerous. Grade two means that you can actually feel them, but again, not necessarily dangerous. You could, uh, there's a whole heap of things you can do for those, but basically you don't have to treat them at all. Grade three, that's when they start to get a little bit uh, troublesome. Nearly always they've, this vein here, you can see on the inside of the uh, knee, should have been the size of a thread, but it's actually been stretched. And so rather like a balloon stretching, eventually it reaches a size where it starts to give you some grief. Uh, of course, it can't really go pop. Uh, but what it does do is split a little bit. And when veins start to split, they produce a quite a, uh, an immediate reaction. That's called phlebitis. And if there's a little bit of blood inside the vein uh, and it clots, it's called thrombophlebitis. But usually it's about grade three where you start to do things. Grade four is when it starts, we start to push it, have something done. And that's nearly all, always when the skin starts to change colour a little bit. Uh, and it's all become very itchy or you start to develop eczema and we nearly always push you a little bit to say you should have some treatment you shouldn't leave that alone and then I'll quickly go through those that's if you leave them alone your skin basically becomes so unhealthy that even minor injuries can result in uh, the skin uh, breaking down so sometimes people say oh well uh I developed an ulcer because my grandchild gave me a kick or banged his bike against me. But actually, that's not the reason why you could have the ulcer. It's nearly always that for some years beforehand, your skin has become unhealthy because of varicose vein. And you just didn't realize that's what was going on. So the kind of thing I look for are, have you had itchy skin for a long time? Has it changed color at all and gone a little bit red or a bit shiny? Uh, because they're all signs that your skin's not healthy. And then it just takes a very minor little uh, knock and uh, the skin uh, breaks and then it takes forever to heal. So treatment wise, there are lots of different treatments. I use a laser, but there's plenty of different um, uh, treatments, but they're all essentially the same. So the stripping malarkey, we've kind of stopped doing that. And then we've worked out that if you thread something up the inside of the vein, uh, that and it's a heat-based treatment, you can sort of heat up the vein on the inside and it seals itself. As I mentioned on this slide, the veins you see on the surface are not the only thing that's going on. Nearly always, you have a little column of blood. So this uh, on this slide, this is looking at the inside of the right thigh of a slim leg. And... The top part is the groin. So just at the groin crease is where there's a vein that joins in to the big vein. So think of the big vein like the uh, trunk of the Christmas tree. And the vein you can see running down the inside of the leg is one of the branches. And that's a nice little picture of how we thread the laser up and basically seal and uh, um, get rid of the vein. We use an ultrasound just to check uh, where that uh, watch vein is not working. And sometimes you can be surprised and we just make sure that it's uh, sealed. Now, there are quite a few different treatments available. I would say the heat-based treatments are the best. Um, EVLT is the laser treatment. So that's endovenous laser treatment within a vein laser treatment. There is another thing called radiofrequency ablation, and that's essentially electricity. Uh, but it doesn't sound quite so catchy as a laser. So in order to differentiate it, you call it radiofrequency ablation. And then there are a few other treatments where you inject something into the vein. So with a laser or radiofrequency ablation or even a um, microwave therapy, you're threading a little tiny wire up the inside of the vein to damage it. And there are other treatments involve using a chemical to damage the inside lining of the vein. We tend not to do that. Uh, I'm 
mention uh, glue in it because some people had thought it was a good idea to inject a glue up the inside of veins and I can see why but it does leave the glue inside so one of the bigger advantages I think of endovenous laser treatment or the other heat treatments is all you're doing is heating up the vein you're not leaving any uh, chemicals inside so when you come to me uh, the important bit is although you have a varicose vein or you have some leg ache, I just like to make sure that the varicose vein is the cause of your leg ache or the cause of your swelling. So it's really important to be seen by, I think, a consultant surgeon. I like to do the scan myself. That's to make sure that I can actually treat your vein. And also, I think it's pretty obvious to me if the symptoms you're getting are caused by the vein, I can see. Um, when I chat with you, I give you couple of options. I try my best not to push you uh, into having something done. And really, I just give you the choice and tell you exactly what the uh, what the score is, so to speak. Most surgery we do here is day case. I would say it's pretty close to 99%. And virtually all of it is under local anesthetic. And it's a bit like going to the dentist. It's not exactly the most pleasant experience, but it's not that bad. Most people are pretty stressed uh, having operations and I think in terms of varicose vein surgery EVLT in terms of stress is a bit like going to the dentist it's not like root canal work and I think most people afterwards uh, think of it as being yeah it was okay it, it, not particularly want to have they don't particularly want to have it done every day but it's a, it's a 20 minute procedure of which about two or three minutes is me administering local anesthetic and the anesthetic is not the same as the jab in your mouth from a dentist. So we've shown you a few pictures of what happens. This is uh, somebody who's had treatment to the vein in their thigh. Now, obviously, these are quite good pictures. So um, it's almost like an advert. But if you look at the uh, leg on the far left, you can see the bumpy bits. So this patient actually had a vein running the entire length of his leg. So 40 centimeter vein. You can't see it but you can see a branch of that vein. So the branch comes up onto the surface. So all we did here was we lasered the vein running up the inside of the leg, uh, and that's it. We didn't touch the bumpy bits, um, and that relieves the symptoms fairly quick. And as you can see, two weeks or so afterwards, the vein is deflated, and about six weeks, it looks okay. But I think there's a few little bits there. So sometimes people just want to get rid of the ache and pain, in which case we thread the little laser up and down, and other times people say, no, I want it looking perfect, so would you sort of sort me out? And that nearly always involves a couple of little tiny nicks in the skin, and they're called phlebectomies. And again, it's done under local anaesthetic. And essentially, we break up the little branch of uh, that main vein. So I hope I've explained that reasonably well. So just think of your veins like a Christmas tree. One branch is not working correctly. We thread a little laser up that branch, damage it um, with heat. We need to do a bit of local anesthetic to make sure you don't feel that. And then you end up in a bandage for a few days. You're not quite perfect because you can't um, have a proper shower with a bandage on. But you could walk the dog the next day. I think it takes about two weeks before you're back to full speed and not thinking about your leg. So people who go to the gym normally go to the gym at two weeks. People who walk the dog walk the dog the next day. Everyone after the surgery says, uh, you can feel that I've done something. Most people say it's a bit like a pulled muscle, not much worse than that. Most people take a painkiller of some sorts, whether that's paracetamol or a little bit of Nurofen. I prefer Nurofen, but if you can't take that, paracetamol works pretty well. And I would say that when you see me or Eddie and uh, have a consultation, our whole thing is to work out what you actually want. Because if you come with a medical problem, such as skin that's quite raw, we will tailor your operation to fix that. Other times people come saying, well, they want everything to look perfect. And I'm happy, very happy to treat that as well. It does involve a slightly different treatment plan. But the most important thing we find is that because we do over a thousand people per year normally, the most important thing to me is that people don't have complications, that if you come for a problem, you fix the problem and the patient goes away and forgets about you a few weeks later. 
uh, we don't over treat people uh, and likewise uh, we don't under treat you so we just basically i think it's really important having consultations because you work out what the problem is can you fix it and what's the safest way of uh, of sorting that out so we do have a patient testimonial this is uh, a lady who has um had treatment here it's just a few minutes sometimes i may have forgotten to mention a few things so uh if so i'll uh, i'll i'll uh, tell you just afterwards but we'll just start that now My name is Jo Crossy, I'm 58 years old. Well it did, it was making my legs more uncomfortable as the years went on, feeling very heavy and tired, um, especially in the hot weather, um, my feet would um, swell um, and just generally feeling achy most of the time. Um, I did start working part time and part of that reason was probably unconsciously thinking actually I, I can't keep on my feet all day long every day. We thought it was worth the, um, the drive to go um, and especially when it was um, a beautifully new hospital um, it, was, it was a very pleasant experience um, and I wouldn't hesitate to go back again if I needed to in the future. My GP referred me on the 22nd of January and I had my consultation with Benenden on the 31st of January so I was quite impressed by that. The operation was very straightforward. You are given a booklet to explain um, what the procedure is. Um, Mr Challenger who I saw also talked me through it but obviously when you're in consultation it's a lot of information to take in. So I came home and, and read the leaflet. I also looked um, online for him and he did a very good explanation online. Everything that was in the booklet is exactly what happened on the day you were talked through it and the staff were very um, helpful, supportive and, and talked you through every process. I felt as if I'm um, walking into a lovely environment like that, that um, everything was going to be okay, that it would be state-of-the-art um, technology and processes, so I felt very confident that um, I was in good hands. My recovery was, again, like it said on the tin, you know, I had to wear my bandages for five days and then take those off. I couldn't drive for five days, obviously, because they say for insurance purposes. If I had to stop quickly and I, or if I was in an accident, insurance might not um, be so happy if I was wearing bandages. And then I was back to work in a week. Um, it was a bit achy and a bit sore, but they give you advice about putting your feet up whenever you can, putting in local anaesthetics, uh, sorry, rubbing in local um, anaesthetic gels, wearing a support bandage if I needed to. And I did that a few times because the weather was quite warm um, post-surgery, um, so I, I made use of, of those um, devices and advice and it certainly helped. My life now has changed in that I, I'm not feeling the, the, the heaviness in my legs um, and I have been wearing shorts out and about, which I hadn't done before, so it certainly boosted my confidence in terms of that um, and yes getting back to running after two grandchildren. If anybody was thinking about having their varicose veins done I would recommend the Benenden Hospital. Their technology and, and the processes they do is it's, um, it's just a laser treatment is the way forward um, in terms of not making you lie in a bed, getting you up and getting you mobile. Um, certainly Benenden Hospital is uh, highly recommended as far as I'm concerned. Hey, so <clears throat> I think we're going to just uh, do a little Q&A session uh, and I hope if uh, anyone has any questions, however, um, whether you think they're um, 
stupid or not, don't worry. Just just ask them because uh, uh, often in answering one question, I answer quite a few questions in, in one go. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So we have some questions um, in already. Um, the first one says, I believe my varicose veins would be classed as grade one to two. If I do not treat them, how quickly would they get worse? Uh, there's no guarantee they will. So uh, I think it takes up to 10 years from the time somebody um, sees a little varicose vein uh, to uh, when they become quite easily visible or sore. So you might say varicose veins are often thought of as purely cosmetic. I would say that's not really true. So my plastic surgery colleagues, their busiest time of the year is January, where everyone decides this year they're going to fix things. Uh, vascular surgeons and vein surgeons, their busiest time of year is at the end of summer. That's not because people don't like to look at their legs. It's because they become painful. And when you ask people, when did they start being painful? Nearly always it's taken many, many years to get there. Most people who have varicose veins have other things to worry about. So if they're not that sore, they often wait and wait. Um, and if you have little kids or whatever, you're just too busy. Uh, but when you actually ask how long they've had them, Often it's 10 plus years uh, from when they first noticed a vein to when it actually became, uh, when they actually came to have a consultation to uh, get it uh, treated. So if your veins are relatively small, there's absolutely no uh, rush. I would never push you to have something done. And I would say to you, though, that uh, in treating your vein, uh, whenever you treat it, it's all exactly the same. Uh, quite often the veins are much the same size when they just start. Um, it's just the branches of the vein that's not working get a little bit bigger. Often the vein running up the inside of your leg or sometimes in the back of your calf uh, is moderately large, but the bits you see on the outside are only quite small. So it, and to answer your question, it can often take many, many years before uh, your veins get big enough to bug you. Okay, thank you. Um, this person says they've developed varicose, varicose veins after pregnancy. Um, and now they're not putting so much weight on their legs. Will it get better without treatment? Uh, kind of. So when you, in the last trimester, your progesterone levels went really high. So that didn't cause your varicose veins. Your varicose veins were probably there beforehand, but the hormones made things a lot worse and a baby's head in your pelvis puts a bit of extra pressure on you. So veins are often really big post uh in the immediate um, few weeks post-pregnancy, and then they actually get smaller because your progesterone level drops, but you still have varicose veins. So what normally happens is you're a bit too busy to begin with. Then you go through a summer period where you notice that your legs are a bit swollen, um, but it's rare for somebody who has varicose veins at the end of pregnancy not to unfortunately keep them. Uh, the little valves that keep everything going uh, uphill are really flimsy, and the moment they break, they don't repair themselves. So it's just a case of um, waiting until the vein gets a little bit bigger. So unfortunately, post-pregnancy, if you have varicose veins, I think you'll keep them. Uh, it's just a matter of time before they get a bit a bit bigger. Thank you. Um, this person asks, should they try to walk or exercise less before having them treated so they don't get worse? Uh, no is the answer. So um, when you exercise, when you walk, Many varicose veins feel better because you get a type of siphoning effect. So if you're cycling a bike or walking, uh, the blood has been pumped around your legs. So, um, uh, so most people, when they, for example, go for a walk, the blood supply to their leg will increase uh, twofold at least. Uh, so often varicose vein blood, which is kind of hanging around a little bit, it just gets caught up in the uh, rush of blood flowing in and out of your of your leg. So I would say you should continue to exercise. I can't see any problem with that. Um, sometimes if your skin is sore because of a varicose vein, uh, exercising can be a bit troublesome uh, because it sometimes makes your skin worse. And lastly, I didn't mention too much about compression stockings because that's often what everyone is told to wear, wear a compression stocking. I don't know how anyone wears a compression stocking for longer than a flight. I think they're miserable. And if you have to wear a stocking up to the top of your leg, uh, you need a, a suspender belt to keep it up. That's just not a reasonable long-term solution to a varicose vein. But sometimes 
people who have varicose veins who are exercising, they wear um, skins or a type of compression stocking, and that can make the leg feel quite a lot better uh, afterwards. Thank you. Um, Derek says he has a visible varicose vein, but not too pronounced, but it can be very itchy, particularly in the winter. Yep, that's not unusual. And the important thing to remember there is what you see on the surface is often just the tip of the iceberg. So some people have little tiny veins and visible on the surface and you're wondering how can they possibly complain about that. But when I do a scan, I sometimes show them that they can have a 50 or a 60 centimeter vein running from their ankle right the way up to their groin, which is not working. It's a bit like a yard of ale sitting under the surface with one little point that's coming up onto the surface. So you see the small vein, but there's quite a lot of pressure behind. And what's happening is your skin, which is trying its best to drain the stuff that's left over, um, um, uh, like um, lactic acid and stuff like that, uh, it's just not able to clear quickly enough. And sometimes that produces that reaction where you start to get itchy skin. So it's a sign, itchy skin is a sign your skin has been damaged and nearly always is quite a, lo a large vein under the surface, which you just can't see, especially so in blokes because our uh, skin is a bit thicker because we have testosterone. Girls have nice female ho um, um, hormones, which cause lots of trouble in other ways, but it gives you soft skin. But that soft skin is, means that veins are much more easy to see. So blokey, hard, hairy skin can hide an awful lot. <laughs> Great, thank you. I never need that. Um, I have thread veins only, no clear varicose veins. Can these be treated more easily than the EVLT procedure? Ah, now, thread veins are actually more difficult to treat than varicose veins. And the reason is that thread vein treatments, there's quite a few of them. The reason there's quite a few is because none works perfectly. You can use lasers to treat thread veins, and I have but I found it to be fairly useless. So I treat thread veins with sclerotherapy, which is an injection, but I'm injecting something into a vein to damage it, to stop it working, and then to allow your body to dissolve it away. For big varicose veins, when you laser it, basically the vein blocks off, uh, goes into mush and gets dissolved quite easily. But the skin ones, uh, thread veins on the skin are more visible. So it sometimes takes more effort in terms of coming to clinic uh, to get rid of thread veins because you have to be very careful you don't damage the good skin around them and also when you damage them it's really obvious to see so they look quite dark or bruised and it sometimes takes three or four goes to treat uh, thread veins sometimes just one uh, but I would say that whilst they're two kind of separate things and I'm always very careful with thread veins to tell people that first of all it's almost never works with just one go sclerotherapy and the second thing is it often takes months for your skin to look good enough for you to wear shorts and not to um, have to explain what the bruises are in your leg so there is a period so from my point of view I've always find thread veins slightly more difficult to treat just because I'm telling people that it takes months uh, to get a good look whereas varicose veins I would treat them and two weeks later uh, they're back in the gym doing their stuff feeling better um, they may have some bruising, but they're uh, back to normal, so to speak. Thread veins, because they're not particularly painful and they may annoy you when I treat them, they uh, may annoy you a little bit more because they become bruised and battered. And then you come back to see me a few weeks later and I do the same thing again. So often that treatment episode uh, stretches into many weeks and then we just wait and let everything settle down. And that can take another few weeks. So it's very important um to manage not so much expectations but the time scale varicose veins quick back to normal feel great thread veins can be a little bit frustrating i normally tell people that thread veins are a bit like watching paint dry you know eventually it'll be it'll work but it just takes forever and you often what happens is you have treatments i tell you to wait a month or two and then you look down you realize they're all gone uh, but the initial um bruising is quite significant it can be quite annoying Okay, thank you. I guess this time of year is the right time of year to get your spider veins done then. Yeah, it is. But most people don't look at their legs in, mm. in winter because they're too cold. And then the time yeah. they do look at them is in the summer when it gets warm. And then I usually say, 
be a bit careful because I could ruin your whole summer by leaving you with bruise marks everywhere. And of course, remember that once people look at your legs, they ask what happened. And then you're giving the same tutorial on thread vein treatments for the whole summer. So you have to be, <laughs> be careful about timing. Indeed. OK, we have a few more questions. Um, this person says they're quite hesitant about having the treatment as they feel very faint easily. Uh, for example, just having blood tests. How would EVLT compare and would they see anything unpleasant? Uh, you can avoid seeing anything because I usually have you lying flat. So therefore, you don't usually faint. Uh, we uh, always have the room quite cold because I've found that if you warm up the room to make it pleasant, uh, people tend to feel a little bit ill or can faint. Uh, so I keep the room a little bit cold. You don't have to see anything. You might be surprised at the lack of uh, blood in a EVLT treatment. It's usually kind of minimal, but essentially you don't have to look at anything. I would say if you uh, people who do uh, faint, occasionally um, people do get a little bit uh, queasy. One of the good things is I don't like you to fast beforehand. So I like you to eat normally, have your coffee, do your normal stuff, arrive in and have it done. And sometimes people who faint don't have brekkie before they come to have things done because they're nervous about it. And that can occasionally make it a little bit worse. The other thing is blood tests are, are a bit weird. They do stick in decent old needles into you. The stuff I, uh, the needles I use are much, much smaller than that. I couldn't do a blood sample test on the needle I use to um, inject local anesthetic into you. In fact, I have to use a pump to get the uh, local anesthetic in because I, uh, it hurts my hand because I have to put so much pressure uh, on the needle because it's so it's so small. So we use a little pump to help me. Uh, so you don't have to look at it. And most people who um, are prone to fainting, we have them lying flat. So uh, at the moment, if you feel a bit queasy, you let me know. We hold off. Uh, but it's not unusual for people to be queasy um, with blood samples. In fact, people often faint when I'm doing a scan on them, uh, just because when you stand up looking at something uh, occasionally you can feel a bit bit weird it's usually very tall heavy blokes uh, rather than girls surprisingly mm -hmm. okay um Anne says can the lumpy purplish veins around the feet and ankles be treated how soon after total knee replacement can treatment for varicose veins be treated please as well okay so the ones around the ankles they are the most difficult veins to treat by miles and the reason is your skin is very um thin and any treatment you do there you have to be absolutely certain that you don't cause a complication where the skin breaks down and you get a little tiny what i call little spot ulcers um, and they can be really painful and annoying uh, for everyone so what i usually say to people is if you have a varicose vein have the varicose vein done first that usually deflates everything if there's a big varicose vein, I'd of course remove that around your ankle. Big ones are easy. The small ones, I usually wait. Very occasionally, if people have <clears throat> an enormous number of thread veins around their ankle, I just tell them there's no way I'm going to get rid of all of those. That um, I can make them better, uh, but I certainly can't make them go back to the way they were when you were 16. And there is no amount of treatment that uh, will get rid of those safely. Uh, but for a lot of them, just getting rid of the bigger varicose veins, they go back to looking what I would call as normal ankles, uh, so not lumpy. And and it is not unusual for people to come saying, I just want to wear flip-flops again because I'm fed up with all these marks. And you, that usually you can get people back to wearing flip-flops. But getting rid of every single thread vein, particularly around the ankle, can be prone to problems. Uh, so it can be quite difficult. The second question about the... Uh, um, post knee replacement uh, more or less whenever you like is the answer to that but I would say the most important thing after an operation is that you're mobile so if after knee surgery often people are more mobile than they were beforehand once you're mobile it's fine you can have anything uh, have, have it done everyone talks about this six weeks um, rule that you should wait six weeks before a flight six weeks before an operation I don't know where people get that from I would say once you're mobile and feeling okay, I'm happy to get rid of your varicose vein then. We just need to wiggle the screen. <laughs> uh, 
I think it's locked. Um, whilst you're doing that, we have our final question. Um, I have early signs of varicose veins, which I'm worried about on one leg. Does it always affect both legs eventually? Uh, no. So when you come to me and I'm chatting away, telling you what's available to you, I will say, if we treat your right leg, your chance of that vein coming back is about 1%. That doesn't mean that that vein is going to come back because when you laser a vein, it's gone. So some people will advertise that they have no recurrence rate, have a recurrence rate of zero, which is kind of can be true. I think about 1% of veins pop back and that's usually an extra vein uh, near uh, where the, the one you've treated. That's pretty rare. But what I really tell people is that depending on their age group, but if you're in your 30s and you have a varicose vein on one side, I think you have a 10% chance of coming back with another vein that's nearly always the other side. So 10% probably is the risk of developing a varicose vein on the other leg. Um, you might say, but, but I know loads of people who've had vein operations and then you know they've had to go back and have a second operation and then the other leg went. I would say if you had your vein stripped, your recurrence rate is much higher than that. With a laser, um, uh, treating the vein itself that's causing you trouble, that, that's not really going to come back to bug you. But I think for whatever reason you got veins in the first place, which can be genetic or whatever, loads of people have tried to work out what the uh, cause is. Uh, basically, other than gravity, we haven't really found uh, found the uh, the actual cause. But I think statistically, it's about 10% chance you're going to get a vein on the other leg uh, to give you a bit of grief later on. Right. Thank you. So that's all of our questions. So thank you very much, everyone who um, did post a question. It's, it's really good to talk those things through. Um, Mr. Sweeney, could you go on to the last slide, please? Thank you. So as a thank you for joining this session, we are offering 50% off the value of your consultation, a call back from your dedicated private patient, private patient advisor, and we have one on the line right now. Um, an email tomorrow with a recording of this session and further information and updates on news and future events. So if you'd like to discuss or book your consultation, our private patients team can take your call until 8 p.m. this evening or between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Monday to Friday using the number on the screen on the right hand side. We'd be grateful for you to complete the survey when this session closes as it helps improve our future events. Um, if you're future interested in other webinars, our next webinar is on knee replacement surgery next week. Um, and you can sign up to that via our website. And finally, on behalf of myself, Mr. Sweeney and our expert team at Bendon Hospital, I'd like to say thank you very much for joining us today and we hope to hear from you soon. So thank you very much and goodbye. <laughs>